Welcome back, my name is Benji. Today I want to welcome you to the Giro d'Italia 2021 on Pro Cycling Manager. This year, we're going to be riding through every single stage on Pro Cycling Manager the morning of the race. Parkour-wise, this Giro is really beautiful. I think I'm going to highlight four stages I think that are going to be decisive and nice to ride. First of all, I'll go straight towards stage 11. Montalcino, the memories of Evans in 2010 do show up, but uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool as well. This year, hopefully in a rainy situation. The next one is Monte Zoncolan, always decisive, but it's the uh, easier side on paper. So it shouldn't be as deadly and the gap should be able to stay relatively low. Although uh, this one can certainly lose your GC if you fall through that day. Then the next one is a five star one, Cortina d'Ampezzo. We've got a climb at the stars, which means that you've got a large breakaway opportunity. And we have Fedaya, Pordoi and finally the Jao which is uh, with a large ascent to the line. So descending attacks could actually play a role. And I think the descent of the Fedaya or the Pordoi, one of those, are actually pretty damn crazy as well. But nonetheless, on to the next stage that I think is going to matter a lot. And that is, uh, well, Diala, of course, but also Alpedimera. But mostly this one, Urbania to Madissimo, perfect 20 stage in my opinion. Large climbs leading into a smaller climb at the finish line, which means that if you are five minutes behind, you got to start on Bernardino. If you are three minutes behind, you can go for a YOLO attack on the uh, Paso de las Pluga. And then eventually, if you are the GC leader, you're going to try and hang on on all of them. And if you've got energy left, you can still attack on the final climb, the Madissimo. But that only depends on who's behind you, because let's say you're on... You're 30 seconds ahead of Remco Evenepoel who can time trial and you see that on the final day we've got a 293 kilometer time trial. Well, you're gonna want to try and attack him then. So uh, this is still an opportunity for that to happen. But yeah, ending in a time trial should be a nice Giro d'Italia. Looking forward to riding it. And today we're going to be starting with the first time trial from Torino to Torino. But let's take a look at our team first. It's a start-up from Intec. Yes, Alexander Vlasov is the leader of my team here. We've got great support surrounding him with Jorge Izaguirre, Luis Don Sanchez, Pronsky, Tejada as well. Batistella can climb a bit as well, Sobrero as well, and Fellini as well. So an entire team with the possibilities of climbing. Potentially one of the better teams in this Giro when it comes to team support. But uh, next to that, we've got no sprinter except for Fellini. We're going to be sprinting with Fellini because I feel like it. Vlasov himself has, I think, 79 mountains, 76 hill, 70 time trial, and 73 prologue. That time trial and prologue is mainly from the Paris Nice time trial he did in real life. In regards to his mountain stat, it's uh, it's going to be competitive because I think that Land does the uh, best climber here on paper with mountain 81. Then we've got Simon Yates with 82. Never mind. Okay, Simon Yates a better climber on paper here. And then finally we have Bernal. Who I'm blinded by. Yes, there we go. 80 mountain only. So uh, the Tour de France of last year certainly influenced his stats in this database. But all in all, I think that we've got an opportunity of podiuming this Giro. But we are obviously here for better. We're here to win it. On to the first stage then. Torino to Torino. It is a flat stage. 8.3 kilometers. So not a prologue. Fun fact. If it was a prologue and one of my riders DNF'd in real life. Then they would be able to start the day after. But... Because they make it above 8 kilometers, that's not the case, and that rule doesn't come into play. And for example, if you DNF on 8.3 kilometer time trial, then you cannot restart on the next stage. So, uh, fun fact for y'all, but let's get started. Let's try and get Vlas of a good time on the first prologue slash time trial thingy. And uh, I think that's roughly it, because I doubt we've got anyone really competitive on the time trial aspect. Perhaps Sobrero is one of the better ones. Horka, not so much. So Luis Leon Sanchez could do well, honestly. There we go, the first rider is of Venchiarutti for Androni. Now, I won't be showing every single rider, nor every single one of my own teammates. I'll try and focus on the ones that could do something. So most likely that will be Sobrero, Sanchez, and also Vlazov, because those are the ones that actually matter for me on this stage. I'll try and figure out some of the favorites for the stage and the GC. And try and show them as well, but I can't promise too much because uh, it's been a while since I recorded PCM, as you can tell from my channel. While we're waiting for Sobrero to start, I'd like to highlight the creation of this Giro d'Italia on PCM because it was made by four community members, including Emre, Stylus, 
Nibali San Baronto and also Barna. So big shout out to them. Definitely check out their links to their pages of stages in the description of this video or the pinned comments. So uh, definitely do so. So Browns off, we've got 77 on the day on time trial and 78 on prologue. On this stage, prologue matters more because in PCM in a 17.5 or I think 15 kilometer plus time trial, it counts the time trial stat more and under that it counts the prologue stat more. And uh, well, it's a bit more of a prologue today. So looks like I need to speed up a bit because Sobero is not exactly looking too fine. I think we're not gonna be fast here, but we're gonna be pretty close, fourth time. Ooh, Nibli's already past the finish line. I forgot about it. I didn't see that. The legend himself, the shark, the best rider in the world, in my dreams. But still, 81? Something like that. Let's scroll back and take a look at that shot. EF Education first. Always goes for some crazy designs in the Giro. The Ducks last year. Now it's a mashup from like historical things. But anyway, third time at the finish line. Ah, Could have been better, I think. DJ and Diego Ulisi ahead of us. Didn't expect Ulisi to be up there, to be honest. There we go, Luis Leon Sanchez is off. Let's put him on uh, 80 as well, I guess. We've got 78 on him as well in regards to Prologue. It feels like it's a bit uphill at the start here and then downhill towards the line, but it's not too noticeable, to be honest. Let's go 81 instead and see what he can do at the first time check. Here we go, come on, LLS, you can do it. Crossing the line right now. Sixth time, not too amazing. Was hoping for better, but he's doing uh, one second better than your boy, Mateo Sobrero. So let's try and do that again on the line. The line's coming in. Luis Leon Sanchez spreads towards it. And sixth, not too amazing. Worse than Sobrero, same time. Found a GC candidate. Giantly finishing at 33 seconds. Not ideal, but we know he's not the best time trialist for certain on the road but there's a lot of people for GC coming up Buchmann as well not looking amazing but also not too bad nine seconds down which means roughly a uh, 16 17 on the line but he's got like 71 time trial so if I can have a time that is roughly a tiny bit better than Buchmann I'm gonna be pretty happy here because then we'd be losing around I think 25 seconds towards the better GC time trialist like Almeida and Evenepoel perhaps that's uh what I've got on my mind right now. Hugh Carfi coming in as well. Vuelta rider of last year. Had his brain through 20 seconds down. So uh, not a bad time trial. But not too amazing either. I'd love to have a time with Vlasov. Very similar to that one. Because that would be good. To be honest. 20 seconds down on the likes of Walshide. Van Garderen. Trapnik. Perhaps Van Garderen is overperforming here though. Here we go. An actual baby riding the Giro. Andre Polomar. 18 years old, the man already rode Milano San Remo, and he also is riding the Giro now, so that's pretty crazy for an 18 year old. I can actually up it a bit towards the line, otherwise I'm gonna have too much energy left. Let's go 99, crossing the line with 18 seconds down, so worse than Sobrero and uh, Maradut Sanchez on the finish line. We do notice that Brentla seems to have taken over the front lines of the... Uh, finish here. We've also got Danny Martinez and Kangard up there as well. George Bennett about to finish. Not exactly a desired discipline. 20 seconds down already in the middle and now likely 35-ish. 31. Second part was better than the first it seems. Likely because the descend is part of that. Remco is here as well and he's leaning into the last kilometer. Fourth at the uh, intermediate with two seconds down. I bet he's gonna get the first time here. Is he gonna beat Brentle? Nope. Fourth time. Three seconds down, that's rather disappointing. Bernal's off, the favorite of his race on paper, together with Simon Yates. And uh, his time trial is 70, 69 prologue. So I don't necessarily expect the biggest of performances, but I do see him coming very, very close. Vlasov starting at about 13 riders, so I think from this point onwards, we'll see mostly GC riders. Let's see what Bernal does here, because he's crossing the intermediate, and... 90 seconds that it's not that great of a time let's hope we can get a similar time with Vlasov or perhaps a tiny bit better I think we should be able to do so Joao Almeida what can he do my pick for the real Giro because I will enjoy rooting for him quite simple and he's got 11 seconds down worse than his teammate Remco so there's gonna be some tension in that team at the dinner table tonight Vlasov time there we go 
Let's up him towards, ooh, minus one on Prologue. Not the stat I was looking for. Let's go for AG and see if that's all right with Alexander here. I think that our benefit is that we've got one of the better mountain stats in this uh, Giro d'Italia. Probably the third best climber in the race, if I'm thinking straight. Fourth best, yes. Because we have Bernal, Landa, and also Yates as better ones. So, uh, my minimum goal is podium, but I'd love to win the Giro. And I think that if we play it right, we uh, could actually do so. We've got the team for it. Let's take a look at the first intermediate. We have 18 seconds down. Oof. On the line, we're going to be finishing on a 56 spot, 26 seconds down, Simon Yates. Nine seconds down on the first section. He's going to gain time on us. Not too much, but I was hoping we could stay relatively similar to Simon, at least on this stage. We're going to need to find a way to uh, get rid of him in the final two weeks of this race. Let's take a look what time he gets. He crossed the line in 15th, it seems. So that's actually not too bad. And Filippo Ganna on the road, likely going to win this with utter ease. Yes, five seconds up from Barentle. Afini seven seconds down. Landa's going to be finishing as well. Oh, he already lost our time at the first intermediate. So it's going to be really poor at the final. 35, 46 seconds down. That's horrendous. Sagan? Ooh, that was close. His first intermediate was scary. Two seconds down. You went on the road, and Cavania is last rider on the road as well. First time at the first intermediate, and it's going to be a close one. I think it's for Ghana. Yeah, it is. Zero seconds down, though. And now it's one second. So, between the finish and the stage classification, the time seems to have changed quite a bit. But I think we're going to be 32 seconds down on leader Ghana now, or something similar to that. Ghana's also the first. Maglia Rosa wearer. Looks great on him. Ah, lovely. Funny spot is that Sagan's already gaining points for Chiclamino. Nine points for that. Just because of the time trial. Bloody amazing. Honestly, not our best time trial that we could do, but the form of Lazov wasn't exactly what we were hoping for. 22nd for Sobrero. Did a bit worse than in real life last year. Luis Leon Sanchez, 27th on the time trial as well. Filene, 41st. Looking for Vlazov here. He's on same time with Julius van den Berg, 33 seconds down. Tomorrow we've got a very different stage on the menu, a flat stage. Most likely for the sprinters, I'll try and get someone in the breakaway. And if that does not work, I'll be trying for a sprint with, I think, Fellini on this stage. Can't wait to see you there. That was it for today's first episode. We're gonna try and win this Giro with Vlazov. And I will need your support to try and do that. So, if you like this video, then tap the like button. If you didn't, then what's wrong, I'll try and make it better for you next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.